Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today is another Reading Women video, so today's prompt that I'm going to talk about is books over 500 pages. Now obviously the scope of this prompt is huge, because there's so many books that are over 500 pages, so I'm just going to whiz through a load that I have and would recommend. Um, and then touch on a couple that I have on my shelf that are significant possibilities, but we shall see what I'm going to read for that. Because I will admit, like many people, I do avoid the chunkier tomes because I just get, like, annoyed <laughs> if I have to spend too long on a book, to be honest, which is terrible. But it just, because, I mean, I told you, I've got, like, over 500, pa over 500 books on my TBR, it's a lot of books to get through guys. So anyway, um, let's crack on. So some books I would recommend. This is a great opportunity to talk about my favourite book of all time, which is The Time Traveller's Wife by Audrey Niffenegger. This is mm, legit my favourite book of all time. I cannot wax lyrical about this book enough. Nothing you say will get me to dislike this book. I will love it forever. I actually collect editions of this book, so I have five. This is one of five editions of this book. I am just totally in love with it. Um, it is a contemporary fiction, but magical realism about, it's a love story about Henry and Claire. So Henry has a condition that means he just gets torn um, forward and backwards in time. Um, and he has no control over it. And he... And this, yeah, so this is kind of his love story with Claire. So Claire first meets him when she's six and Henry is in his 30s or 40s and he's been kind of pulled back in time um, to meet Claire when she's six. But then Henry doesn't meet Claire until he is, I think, in his late 20s, early 30s. Um, because it's always been like future Henry that gets torn back in time meeting young Claire. Whereas then Claire rocks up to kind of sort of present day Henry and he has no idea who she is. And so it's just, it's kind of back and forth showing this like beautiful love story. And it's not, it's a really flawed, really human love story. It's not like saccharin or twee and um, yeah, I just can't. I didn't prepare myself to talk adequately about this book but if you haven't read it just read it and if you don't like it don't tell me because <laughs> I don't want to know so that's one so I've really you know started with my best one another one that is uh over 500 pages so I've got a load here of books I have read and would highly recommend but I don't have copies of so I'm going to see if I can somehow figure out like magic editing that's going to show like a picture around here if it doesn't I didn't figure it out guys we just have to get on with it so um but i will put a link uh down below so um one i would recommend the goldfinch by donna tart so this if you're talking about books over 500 pages this is a big one so this one's about 800 pages i think and this was definitely a case of me being like mm, i don't want to read it it's gonna take me so long to get through um and actually i did make it to the end i am a prolific abandoner of books I will just give up because I think life's too short for bad books and I made it through to the end of this so my rating of four stars out of five may or may not be swayed by the fact that I made it to the end and saw that as a personal achievement <laughs> not sure if it's a reflection on the quality of the book but I did enjoy it otherwise I would have given up on it it's a historical fiction about um, a boy called Theo who is in uh, a bomb explosion in an art gallery and ends up taking a painting, stealing a painting of the called the Goldfinch. And then you just sort of follow him as he grows up because he's basically, his mother is killed in the blast. And so he, that's not a spoiler, it happens really early on. So yeah, it's kind of how he deals with that and the rest of his life and all the various things that happen to him. So it's a bit of an epic, like I said, 800 pages. So if you, you know, if you wanna really get into something hefty, the Goldfinch is a good one. Another one, Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. This is another one which is kind of time travel -y. I clearly like my time travel. Although it's not, actually no, that's a total lie. It's not time travel. Basically, um, the main character whose name has deserted me keeps get Ursula. She keeps getting reborn. Um, so she, yeah, she dies and she keeps getting reborn. And so you kind of follow her, yeah, sort of throughout her life. But she doesn't really realise, I think for quite a long time, she doesn't really realise she can do it. 
Um, and so you kind of, and it's a wartime, like Second World War book. Um, and there's, I can't really describe, there's not much else to it. It is just kind of following her through her life as she keeps dying and being reborn. But, <laughs> but it's very, very good. And it isn't really, even though that seems like quite a sort of fantasy element, it isn't really. It's very much like a historical fiction. It's kind of a, another magical realism, I guess. You just sort of need to put aside that it's just a thing that you accept that it's happening. And then what's really about it's about her and about her family and about how she lives and about wartime and stuff like that so it's very very good i'd recommend that next one i have is the paying guests by sarah waters uh so this is also one that you could use for um lgbtq so this is about um a young woman um and her mother who have to take in um lodgers and it's about the relationship between her and the wife. Um, so it's a couple that come and stay with them and it's about her relationship with the wife. And it's all kind of, it's a bit of a saga. There's a bit of, it's a bit of drama involved. I'm not describing these very well. Apologies, let's move on. Um, Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. So this was a book that I read quite a few years ago and it was one of the first books that really kind of opened my eyes to um, the whole conversation about race. Um, so Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie is a Nigerian author and her, but this is her third book. I would recommend all of her books, by the way. Um, but this is her third one and it's about um, Femalu who ends up travelling from um, Nigeria to America and living in America for a while and that kind of brings up a whole load of stuff about um, you know, Americans' perception of race. So in Nigeria, she's just Nigerian and she gets to America and suddenly she's black or African-American and what does that mean? Um, and then her boyfriend back in Nigeria, Abinze, um, he doesn't go to America. He ends up actually going to the UK but as a kind of illegal immigrant. Um, and so you kind of, you see them both in their parallels and it is about their relationship and how that goes, but also about what's happening around them and, and, and what's it like to be in their different contexts. So that one I really would seriously, seriously recommend. Um, what else have I got? Oh yes, the Cormoran Strike series. Um, so all of those are over 500 pages because J.K. Rowling loves a chunkster. Um, so yeah, that's quite a good sort of crime series. I really enjoyed that. It is by Robert Galbraith, but everyone should know by now that it is actually J.K. Rowling, so it is by a woman. Um, and yeah, that's just kind of, it's a really good crime series. I'd recommend that one. And then another, the final one that I don't have with me is The Night Circus, because my cousin has my copy of The Night Circus and she's gone to Australia and I don't have it. Um, but The Night Circus is a fantasy about um, these two men who um, have kind of a pact or it's like a competition. So they have a young boy and a young girl and it's kind of this lifelong sort of game that they have to be the most skilled I guess I think it's kind of something around whether or not you can learn magic or whether or not you kind of have it innately and what that means um and so through the course of that this circus gets created called the night circus and the two um protagonists are you know part of that circus um yeah that's kind of I feel like that summarizes it I don't want to give too much away I love it love it love it the night circus definitely recommend that so on to the ones that I do have with me, a few more that I've read. So this is all um, young adult fantasy series because I've found actually young adult fantasy, they love a long book as well. Obvious one to start off with, Harry Potter. So this one is The Goblet of Fire, um, Order of the Phoenix. I feel like Half-Blood Prince might not, not sure. I'm looking at my copies right now. And The Deathly Hallows, I think, looks like it's over 500 pages. So, like I said, J.K. Rowling loves a chunkster. Um, I mean, if you haven't read Harry Potter, I'd... I don't really know what to say to you. Um, the next one is The Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. So, um, this is the second in a duology. So, Six of Crows, I think, just narrowly missed out. Six of Crows is the first one. Narrowly missed out on being 500 pages. Um, I, even though this is quite substantial, I think I inhaled this in about three days. So um, six, the Six of Crows duology is a spin-off from um, the main series, and I can't remember what that series is called. Um, but it's basically all about this kind of group of sort of children, young adults, and their like um, little thieves. It has, I feel like it has a bit of an Oliver vibe, like a fantasy Oliver vibe. That's kind of how I describe it. Um, 
But yeah, they're sent off kind of on a mission to steal stuff. It was a long time ago since I read it, but I'd really recommend it. Then we have um, this one. So The Court of Wings and Ruins by uh, Sarah J Maas. This is book number three in the A Court of Thorn and Roses series. The second book, A Court of Mist and Fury, would also count, but I've lent that one out to my friend. Um, these are chunky books. So this is all, so the first book in the series, which wouldn't count for this, A Court of Thorns and Roses, is a Beauty and the Beast retelling set in the world of the Fae. But then the second and third book, as I said, would definitely count. I have strong feelings about this series. Um, I, I've, put, I've got some reviews over on my IGTV channel, so go and check that out. <laughs> basically the first book it's just it's trash like it's garbage but it's that kind of like filthy garbage that you hate yourself for but become obsessed with frighteningly quickly that was kind of my relationship with the Akatar series so the first book yeah <laughs> such garbage and it's just like problematic on all the levels but I got obsessed with it and we went on holiday just for a weekend away to Madrid and I read the first one and then immediately like bought the second one on my Kindle and then got home, like finished the second one on the plane, literally landed at Heathrow and ordered the third one and started reading it on my phone. <laughs> so that should give you a measure. And given how big it is, I basically read the whole series in about five days. But the second book I felt was my... It got slightly less problematic over the course of the series. But um, don't judge me. So those are the ones that I have read and would recommend. And then there's a couple that are on my shelf that are potential options for what I'm going to read for the challenge this year. There's this one. Uh, Rebecca's Tale by Sally Bowman. So I think this is an imagined sequel to Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Which is a fantastic book and I would recommend so I'll read you the blurb. April 1951, it is 20 years since the death of Rebecca, the hauntingly beautiful first wife of Maxim de Winter. Not a spoiler, if you haven't read Rebecca, she's already dead. It is 20 years since the inquest, which famously and controversial... Mm. I feel like maybe actually me reading the blurb is a bit of a spoiler, so I'm going to stop. But, yeah, actually the blurb doesn't really tell you anything about what this is actually about. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 600 pages so that could be quite an investment that's a risky investment what I think will probably end up being the one I read is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel so I've never read this I have a bit of a complicated relationship with the Man Booker Prize because normally if it's won the Booker or been nominated for the Booker I don't like it and not in principle I have genuinely tried and I haven't had some good experiences what did break that for me was Milkman the audiobook very very good and I am also about to read Girl, Woman, Other, um, which obviously famously jointly won the Booker in 2019. So maybe this is the start of a good relationship with me and the Booker. Maybe it's just been I've chosen the wrong ones. So maybe this is the start of something new. And maybe Wolf Hall will continue that for me. We shall see. I'm just I'm also a bit obsessed with the, like the gold. I love it. It's so pretty and shiny and like a magpie. Anyway, I'm wittering on now. This is gonna be a very long video. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what you're reading for this prompt if you're doing the challenge. Let me know any other big chunksters written by women that you think um, are worth reading. Um, yeah. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down. Give me some comments. Subscribe. Whatever you like. It's lovely to hear from you. Um, and I'll see you again soon for another video. Bye.